Hey everyone, you're listening to The Public Affair with me, Andrew G. I see someone different every episode, but do me a favor, keep it between us. Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Andrew G, and welcome to another exciting episode of The Public Affair. Uh, before we get started, of course, I have to use this opportunity to thank you guys again so much for all the continued love and support of the show. I truly appreciate you guys, and with over 100 episodes in the can um, and the show still going strong, I just truly, truly can't even express the amount of gratitude that I feel daily to you guys. So thank you all again so much, of course, to Rogue media network with mike and allison who sit there and edit all my episodes i think they got some students editing now too so a big shout out to them and Corey dickman's fine eh? <laughs> thank you so much for everything you guys do for the public affair truly appreciate you before we continue i definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few of our sponsors of this episode of the public affair this episode is brought to you by four brothers construction with my boy joel olvera he provides custom home designs and renovations darling he also focuses on roofing remodeling plumbing tree removal electrical work and so much more joe and his entire team of men delicious men <laughs> are building affordable dream homes for you make sure you call the number on the screen with my boy joel olvera and get a consultation thank you so much for being a long time sponsor of the public affair of course the bnj refinishing with my boy frank biza who focuses on resurfacing bathtubs counters sinks tiles and more to original showroom quality he offers five-year warranty on most work and has the best prices in town he'll also rent you an inflatable a mechanical bowl margarita machine table chairs a foam machine and so much more making all your parties super lady kitty to my boy frank biza thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair of course the david santa Vanez uh, with alinea real estate i should say the number one sales agent at alinea real estate he'll help you buy a home or sell your property make sure you follow him on facebook at david with a linear call the number on the screen darling for all your real estate needs my boy david is out there kicking a and taking names i love seeing all his success thank you so much for being a longtime sponsor of this ep- of the episodes of the public affair of course the peewee's crab cakes of texas with my girl anika armstrong oh, serving the most authentic cajun cuisine with a wide selection of signature crab cakes pasta seafood and more it's really hard to say what my favorite is now i mean i love the crabby seafood pasta but every time i go there it's a different experience and all the food is at Absolutely amazing. Their top recommended is the Southern Fried Catfish Special served with seafood, pasta, potato salad, and six fried shrimp, and the fish is topped with hoodat sauce. Now, I'm not going to tell you what it is because you got to head over to 108 Gym Drive in Hewitt or order online at order peewees crab cakes on the go.com. My girl, Anika Armstrong, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Oh, and of course, to Waco Fencing and stuff with my boy Juan Morales. Now, Juan builds privacy fences and chain link fences, perfect for all that extra at home privacy. He also builds wood decks, stone patios, and gorgeous flower beds darling make sure you contact him with the number on the screen for your consultation my boy juan morales thank you so much for being a longtime sponsor of the public affair i truly appreciate you bro all right guys so like i said i've been really really excited to have this next guest on the show um as it turns out i actually invited him on quite a few months ago and completely forgot it until somebody kind of reminded me. Um, and then more than one person actually told me this would actually be a really good guest to have onto the public affair. Um, and it's been quite a while since I've had a barber on the show, so I said, why not? And I'm really, really, really excited to welcome and introduce Mr. Carlos Canales for coming on to the public affair. Finally, you're here. How <laughs> you doing? You. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yes. Can Thank you, you believe? Me. Of course, first of all, I'm really happy that you didn't cancel. I was really scared oh, that no, you were going to cancel. I don't do cancellations. Okay. Yeah, well, because you're a barber, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Does doesn't that get on your nerves? Oh my God. Can I just say- I know how that works. Yeah, can I just say for full disclosure, I had a different kind of appointment right before this recording. I'm not gonna say what it is because I'm trying to keep it, you know, whatever. But um, gotcha, gotcha, they, gotcha. they canceled on me. So I'm a yeah. little agitated right now, uh, okay? <laughs> because it's hard <laughs> enough to already fit that in the yeah. schedule because I'm very busy. And so they were like, oh, I'm hungover. Okay, what? well, th- yeah. Um, th- so congratulations to being married because you never have to ask for it except yeah. me. Okay, but no, you know what, Carlos? As it turns out, okay. So one of my one of our good friends, or one, mm-hmm. I guess he's one of your best friends, yeah. Joe. He's also yeah. my trainer. Yeah. yeah. And so he had told me that he gets his haircuts by you, and then he was like, "Oh yeah, my friend watches your show, mm-hmm. and he said that you had invited him on." Well, you know, everybody says that I've invited them on. Right? Yeah. And so when he told me that it was you, I looked it up on my messenger, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I messaged him in November and never messaged him back. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm trying to think. Like, was yeah. it November? It was, like, was it was in November yeah. because I looked at the messages and um, I remember at the time you said it wasn't really your thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I, yeah, that's what I told you. And then I was just a little shy. Uh-huh. I just felt bad, you know, because like, I, I mean, I got a YouTube channel. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to tell this guy that I'm shy. Dude. Okay. Th- yeah. And, and before, like, I just want to give you props because you guys, all those those promos that he just did, he just did that live. Oh, uh, yes. Thank I you. I always thought that was like pre recorded. No, no, sir. They he get just fresh did that recordings. On the fly, just that's turned his it. radio voice on like, <laughs> like a switch. Yes. Like, Th- thank you for letting them acknowledge that because I need yeah, people to no, believe that, that when I do my sponsorship, it's all fresh, dog. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's not that easy, guys. I, it's I, not. I know he's probably done it a couple times, but still. Like, well, I've done it for quite a few, over 
over a hundred times. Yeah. <laughs> you do it live every single time. I do it live every Whoa. single time. There might yeah. have been, I will, I will say, there might have been a few in the past that we kind of had to, you know, squeeze in there from a pre-recorded track. But as of yeah. right now, one of the things that I promised my sponsors is that they're going to get fresh recordings every time because I want every, I had to sound different and exciting. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I wasn't buying that stuff that you were shy because I've watched your YouTube shy. channel, which we're going to get into in a minute. <laughs> and you have a really good like speaking voice. Like you have a really good yeah. extensive vocabulary that I really appreciate. <laughs> I was like, don't tell me that. He's not shy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I appreciate uh, you being here. Yeah. the youth, Man, I, I think YouTube has been, been, I got used to it, I guess. Yeah. But I can't, I guess it's just a different format. I was telling you before mm. we started, like, it's just, I'm used to like my YouTube channel. Like I can just talk and talk right. and talk. And if I don't like something, if I mess up, I just like edit it out. Yeah. Yeah. So this feels a little weird. Oh, okay. Like, Whoa, like, uh, so he's like, he's not in control. I'm not in control. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's what it yeah. is. So well, like, I'll tell you what, we're in good hands because Allison okay, takes yeah, it. She yeah. already knows how I like my stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. We, we are in good. I will say that's one of the things that I envy about you as a YouTuber, like us being in the same field in that aspect is yeah. that you do know how to shoot and edit your own videos. Yeah. Like, it's kind of old though, man. Well, I, <laughs> well, I'll tell, I'll tell you, you what, like sometimes I wish that I had that quality to, you know, be able to do that. You know what I mean? And that skill because they edit all my episodes now i can edit audio all day because i used to produce commercials at the radio yeah. station but um video not my strong suit okay <laughs> um we also have to point out too you are the cousin of kutis who's been on this kutis, show a couple kutis. times we love kutis. Kutis, yeah. yeah he's That's crazy cousin, how are you not crazy like that that doesn't make no sense uh, I don't know, man. he's just always he's always had that personality and it's, yeah like it suits him well like and he it works well for what he does too like, for sure for you know whenever he was at the radio mm -hmm. uh it was just like it was natural to him. And yeah. now that he sells cars, I told him, I was like, man, that's perfect. Bro. That's perfect. Yeah. Talk to all these people into buying a car. And they're just like, yes. he's so convincing. He, he was actually on the last episode. And um, I just don't want anybody from your church to watch that episode. Yeah, <laughs> no, <man. laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I know y'all are not judgment. And then you said yeah. the church was in South Waco. Uh, you know, they yeah, love yeah, my yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah. yeah Kutis, I don't think Kutis goes to our, He doesn't go to our church. So. No, okay. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? South Waco is a community because I just yeah. went to Ali's drive in the other day. Yeah. And um, all the little town was there. And the, I walked out. I felt like I was in like a Hollywood, like, red carpet they all were just like oh my god it's and you we Andrew love G. your oh show yes and i was like it's just me you know I, mean? I just came for you know maria you cookies and that's it. Like, i didn't give out any autographs i did take a few pictures i don't yeah. know where the pictures are right now i hope they're not surfaced online without my Somebody approval first it. somebody's getting likes off you well now. what's up okay you can get anything off of me that's <laughs> okay i'm one of those all right but you know what carlos first of all i just i'm really grateful i know that you've had reservations about coming on the show like most of the men <laughs> that come on this yeah. show i've had reservations but i'm really cool okay i really am I, nice. I can so see that i'm gonna take it i'm gonna take, it, I'm gonna take when, it easy when you called me like a couple days ago like <laughs> When I hung up, I was like, man, this dude's really easy to talk That's to. That's it, right? Like, it's just so Please, please let them know. Like, everything just comes out. Like, That's okay, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, like, it's so genuine. Look, you know what? It, I, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to, maybe this doesn't pertain to you, but a lot of guys are very standoffish with me at first because, you know, yeah. I'm gay. And so they automatically think I'm going to sleep with them. And I'm like, if, yeah. I've, if I accepted your Facebook friend request, just for full disclosure, and I didn't slide in your DMs five minutes later, I don't want to yeah. sleep with you. I'm that person, okay? Well, I, I think you, if you're comfortable in your own sexuality, like, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't. Like, whatever he got going on like it's just it's just me cool. like, we keep it between <laughs> us that's yeah, all like yeah if, if, if you're comfortable in yourself it should yes. be no issue and i will say too carlos your wife is really hot i, I did see because we're friends I on facebook too oh she's yeah. so hot I, you know and then sometimes i just know when to take that and don't stand a chance so yeah. i was like oh we're not even gonna try on this one so move <laughs> on okay yeah. and then uh, where's she from uh she's from Waco. She's like from Waco. north or south uh, North Wales. Oh yeah, they fight. So see, I'm not even doing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm already related to her last name is Gomez. Oh really? Yeah. Well, it was Gomez. Uh, oh, it was Gomez. Name. Oh, because yeah. you know I'm Gomez yeah, too. That's the Gomez. G. All right, bet. Well, what's up? Shout out Gomez. Okay. So anyway, yeah. um, Carlos, um, can you please, for anybody who may not know who you are, can you kind of introduce yourself? Talk to us a little bit about who you are, where you're from, and all that, or life growing up, if you will. Yeah. Uh, my name is Carlos Canales. I'm from Waco. Uh, I've been a barber for about. 16 years, 15 Damn. years, 15, 16 years. I've been licensed for about nine years. Oh, okay. I was so going to say, just like, how yeah, old are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 29. I'm 29. Oh, I started I'm cutting older hair. than you. Get yeah. <laughs> I started cutting hair when I was like 14. Okay. So I've been cutting hair for a long time. I've been mm -hmm. licensed since like 2013. Oh, okay. So got you. Got about you. nine years. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, mm -hmm. I play the drums at my local church. I, yeah. I think I caught Andrew off guard by the one. I don't know if you knew that. Because he <laughs> well, has his little notes. I don't know yeah, if he put on there. I had my little notes. I didn't know that you played the drums at church. So that's really really cute you know i've had listen i've had a lot of church people i had a pastor on this show yeah you know what i mean that. but i'm just really happy that people yeah. like you who are very heavily involved in church can just let mm -hmm. me be myself 
Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, for sure. I, I always, because, you know, I have a lot of gay clients, too. Do you? That I cut and mm -hmm. always make sure I let them know, like, whatever, you know, whatever my belief is, whatever. It has nothing to mm -hmm. do with, like, how I'm going to treat you as a person. Uh, for sure. Like, it's, it's just, it's going to be all love. You yeah. Know I mean? At the end of the day, we're just all people. You, and you, you know can't what? treat people different. And you're so right. I'm so happy that you bring that up because I don't seek acceptance from anybody. I just want that's people good. to like me for me. Yeah, like, you don't have to good. accept that. I'm now, yeah. my best friend in the whole world is a straight man. I've said this before. And he, and from where he's from, half of the people in his town think I'm like a witch. And, so, oh. and that I'm doing brujeria, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm just evil. And then half of the people were like, oh, wait, this is different. He's kind of fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, well, excuse me. I shouldn't say half. I would definitely say 80% of the town think I'm Whoa, a witch. Okay. Half. <laughs> yes. Well, and then I slept the with that 1% up. and, and at, in the town. And then the other, what? 29% whatever <laughs> the case no, I'm like, doing my math I'm doing my math over there? They, like, they think I'm really cool okay basically <laughs> if you're not his immediate family member from that yeah. town you don't think I'm cool so, <laughs> so that's, that's how wild. that goes I just, I just I can never understand it man I, I, can I just ask you just for just for like personal knowledge because it's so interesting to me that you say you have a lot of gay clients yeah. um, did you ever have an issue with like was it weird for you at first kind of interacting with that type of person um, especially being a heterosexual man for me, it was more like it wasn't weird for me, mm -hmm. but I always wanted to make sure that they knew mm. that, like, I guess you can say it's a safe space. Like, you're okay. cool to be yourself. Wow. Like, in my chair, like, there's no judgment. Like, mm -hmm. whatever you got going on, like, that's cool. Like, I, I got some, like, some of my clients, they talk to me about their boyfriend. Really? And I just listen to it like it's a, one of my clients talking about his girlfriend. Like, I just you know, okay. interact. Like, hey, where are you getting your boyfriend for, you know, Valentine's yeah, yeah. Day? Like, we just... Just have conversations. And they'd be like, just regular people, are they really man. femme though? Like, or are they just like kind of uh, like me? Like, <laughs> no, like there, there's, I didn't know there was like different. Oh, like, there's different, there's levels to this. Yeah. All right. Like, Cause so, okay, so some yeah, of them yeah. probably come with the tea, Carlos. They're probably like, ooh, girl, let me tell you something. Well, <laughs> like, of course, like when they start talking, they just, that's usually always like a dead giveaway. Yeah. But a lot, like a lot of them, like they don't really, I guess they don't dress like that. Okay. You know I got mean? you. They just, they just look like a regular guy. Yeah. But no, and those are they my... start talking like, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, are, okay, so can you give them some of my number if they just look like regular guys? Maybe they're single. Excuse me. They're all taken. <laughs> oh, they're all taken? Yeah, from what I know. Uh, oh, God. Well, Carlos, yeah. please, that doesn't mean anything anymore in 2022. Well, okay. <laughs> ain't none of my business. Well, I know yeah, because I will say the person that canceled on me, anyway. So, <laughs> no, okay, well, that's pretty cool that you interact. Yeah. Like, you know, my barber is a straight man, too. Shout out to Sid. And can I just say, too, what, what I love about you, Barber, is that I would definitely say the ones that I've interviewed on this show, y'all really, like, support each other mm -hmm. and, like, don't know each other all the way. And so, I remember Sid telling me too when he was cutting my hair. He's like, "Hey, that guy is really like you should get him on your show because yeah. that would be a good one." I've never met Sid, but I can uh -huh. just tell he's a good guy. Oh, like, he's so awesome! But it's just like I just look at all barbers like that. Like, yeah, there, I mean, of course, there's some barbers that are just not with it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for the majority, like I know for me, like I don't look at any barber as like, "Oh, that's my competition." Oh yeah, like, for sure. It's none of that. I yeah. look at it as like as a as a community. Like, okay, okay. we're all barbers. Like, right. we're all. Like, it's up to us to make all these people in Waco look good look cute, yeah. as a group. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like, like if I'm busy and if I, if I don't have time to get somebody in, I'm always going to be looking for another barber. For sure. To recommend my client to like, hey, I can't get you, but uh, oh, wow, really? this guy over here can get you. He's really good. Oh, okay. It's never, it's never that serious to be like, no, you're going to be cheating on me with another barber. Uh, okay, for sure. Like it's, it's, it's just we're all cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and I definitely want to bring up the competition aspect about it later because I have a lot of questions. You know, everybody's had a different opinion. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you know, and I, I will say for the gay clientele thing, like Sid has always like really let me be myself because at his barbershop at Elite, they would have free beer. And so now I'm not allowed to drink while I'm getting my haircut because I let too much of that tea out. So, <laughs> and then and then I start sweating. You get and cut I, off. Like, oh, no, he's like, oh he's yeah, he's off. like, okay, you can't drink no more because yeah. you'd be like talking about who owes you money, whose man <laughs> slept with you. And it's like, that's it. You yeah. know? And then he's running a very family friendly, you know, yeah. establishment. I don't want to disrespect him. Yeah, so. it. it looks like a nice shop. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Um. So so we just don't drink. Is it, is it you know, is it hard to cut somebody's hair that's super sweaty? Is that uh, like a thing? Is. is it really? It is. I wonder it why. That's why uh, the hair gets stuck. Like, oh, okay. Like if it's wet. It. Yeah. Like if it's, yeah. well, if you're sweating, like as soon as the hair touches you, like I can't just dust it off. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. And then you're going to get itchy or so. It's just, yeah. It's just, it's just all downhill. At the I, you know, when I was a teenager, I used to walk to Great Clips. <laughs> great <laughs> well, excuse me. I was a teenager. It's okay. 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 Yes. Okay. That's yeah. it. I know. We don't do that no more. Uh, but shout out to Great Clips. <laughs> before they sue me but yeah. um you know i used to there used to be a barber and i don't think he works anymore i think he works at a shop his name was Dwayne. i don't know if you know yeah. him he's, he's a gay guy clips. but he worked at great clips when i was a teenager i don't know where he works now but he was the he's a um an african-american guy and he was gay too i believe and um he i would go walk to great clips from mm -hmm. my apartment and i would be so sweaty by the time i get there he goes now nah, you oh, know you man. need to sit there and wait yeah like i'll <laughs> yeah. get the fan i'll just like blow yeah, him off a little bit like let sure. the air hit him a little bit let yeah the, yeah 
Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Great Clips doesn't really have uh, too many barbers, from what I know. Yeah, there's I don't a know, difference. Know. Like, I don't know if mm-hmm. you noticed, there's never a barber pole outside of Great Clips or mm-hmm. Sports Clips. They're not allowed to have barber poles. Well, and I have to say, too, when I was a teenager, I don't imagine there being, I don't remember there being a lot of barber shops in town because yeah. we're relatively the same age. Mm-hmm. So when I was 15, 16 years old, I, I don't remember there being tons of barber shops in Hewitt. You know what oh, I mean? And that's where I've lived since yeah, I was a yeah. teenager. Yeah. Was, uh, so I'm not from rock. here. I'm from New York. Let's get the this. Rock, shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, they had The Rock, but yeah, I didn't see, rock. I didn't know about yeah, it. I was very, sh- yeah. and I didn't have Facebook either. So yeah. it, was, <laughs> it, was, it was hard to find a good. It was hard. The yeah. There's so many barbershops now. Yeah. It's crazy. That's, no, that's it's good, so, though. I'm, that's great. That it's growing for sure. There's three barber schools now. Mm-hmm. Oh, is there really? I didn't know that. Okay. So I mean, it was only, there's so many more barbers just coming out. Yeah. It's only going to get. There's only going to be more options now. That's gotcha. the way I see it. That's cool. Yeah. Okay. I got you. So, Carlos, can you talk to us a little bit about your like your life growing up and stuff? So, you're from Waco. Is it South Waco? North Waco? Um, or just Waco? Just Waco. We moved okay. around a lot. So, I can't okay. really... Like, I, I spent the majority of my childhood in different... Like, in North Waco and mm-hmm. in South Waco. So okay. Got you. Like, I can never... Like, just even my high school. Like, freshman, sophomore, I was at Waco High. Yeah. Junior, senior, I was at university. Oh, great. So everybody should watch this episode because everyone yeah, knows you. <laughs> it, it, it ended up benefiting me because, like, oh, okay. I, I met a lot of people. Right. So now my clientele just, like, oh, your grew. Clients. Like, it wasn't just, like, oh, this set of people. That's okay, people. great. It was just a bunch of people from everywhere. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And you were cutting since you were a teenager, you said, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So I was, uh, okay, so I was about maybe 12. Okay. Thirteen, the first time. Actually, my first client was Kuti. Oh, really? And I don't know if he told you that. Um, yeah. he might have. We were, you know, we were really drunk on the last okay, episode. Okay. Yeah, we were, we were yeah. turning up on that one. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I actually, I messed his hair up. But I mean, but it's his okay. fault. He he went into somebody's house, my girl, our <laughs> house, and let me cut his hair in the yeah. restroom. So what do you expect? You know what I mean? For sure. But uh, he got like it was like a six and a three on the sides. Oh wow! And that's what he asked for. Okay. I don't know what I was thinking. I had the number three guard on there, and I just <laughs> ran it across the top, and I was like. Oh, like bro, <laughs> but but you were fr- you were still new. Yeah, I okay, was, got well, you. He was my first, like my. First, you were green, other yeah. Than, other than like my stepdad, he was like the first person. Okay. That that came to the house to get a haircut. Got gotcha. you. And um, yeah, but I mean, he he uh, he stuck with me. Yeah. <laughs> he came back like two three weeks later and just okay. got the real haircut, like the actual no. the right haircut. But yeah, so I was about 12, 13 when I started uh, cutting mm-hmm. his hair. It really started from uh. My mom used to cut my stepdad's hair. Oh, okay. And so we had a set of clippers in the restroom. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I was like 12, 13. And I was, you know, I was going to get in the shower. And, you right. know, like before you get in the shower, you kind of like look in the mirror, make sure. And, and I was like, man, my Not edgy. me. I know I look fresh. So that's it. <laughs> well, I was like 12. I was a teenager. I get into kid. the showers like the movies. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was like, I was like 12. Okay. And, and I'm like looking in the mirror. I was like, man. My edge up was like this. Really? I was like, I need to do something. Oh, you had like, the V? Yeah. Okay. Was that. And uh, I was like, well, we got the clippers right there. So yeah, I for sure. Like, it started off with just like innocent little tap, tap here. Yeah. Next thing you know, I'm like, I'm cutting my whole hair. Oh, wow. And really? I'm like 12 years old and I'm like messing it up. And, <laughs> just, and, I, and, it, and it bothered me because right. I was like, how come I didn't get it right? I wonder and what your parents' reaction was to that. Oh, like, my mom didn't care. Oh, she, she didn't care. Yeah, okay. she, my, mom, my mom's real nice, but she lets she lets us be do whatever we want. Oh, really? Not in a bad way. She's no, no, just no. just real like... Like, hey, you missed your She hair. sounds accepting. We should be friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. She's, she's real. Yeah. She's, I mean, she's a real nice uh, church lady, but oh, okay. not not like she's accepting of everybody. Oh, for she's sure. She's not that type of church Oh, lady. so she's going to watch this and be really proud of you? Yeah. She's, and she not, and not say she's, that man has a disgusting a nice, mouth? The thing, yeah. No, the thing about my mom, and I yeah. always tell people, like, I, I always respected my mom a lot growing up. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that was because uh, I always saw her around us. Oh, okay. How she acted, mm-hmm. and then how she acted around other people. Oh, for and sure. There was no difference. Like she's the same person. Oh, like, okay. Super nice. When all my friends over, and as soon as they leave, she's just still the same person. Wow, really? And it's like there's no fakeness to her. So, oh, like, that made me respect her a lot. Shout out to your mom. But, yeah, yeah, she's real. She's real nice. Yeah. So, anyways, I I, <laughs> I messed my hair up. Yeah. And then from there, I just kept trying. I was like, man, I'm gonna just keep doing it till I get it right. Okay, got. It. But you, but when at that age, you probably weren't like, I would just want to be a barber. It's just like oh, something man. that you were trying to do yourself. You'd be surprised how long it took me to realize. I oh, really? I was I was fresh out of high school. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Cutting hair. I had like 15, 16 guys. A lot of a lot of people that you've had on here. I've, I've cut. You cut their hair. Before, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you did Dominic a, Villa's uh, yeah. episode out now, by the way. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. yeah. Okay, and Dominic, his... Dominic, uh, Dominic was in high school. He came to my house a couple of times. Too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, man. I had like 15, 16 people okay. just in the room, probably about this size. Yeah, yeah. Just hot. The only time it was cold is when you were getting a haircut because it was right in front of the AC. <laughs> but and man, I'm making like six hundred, seven hundred dollars a week. Oh wow! At like I was like eighteen years old as a novice. Okay, as a novice just at the wow. high school here, and I'm making this much money, and I'
man, what do I want to go to college for? What were we doing? Well, uh, okay, like, yeah. <laughs> we should have been barbers. Dang, oh, man, I wouldn't have a financial worry in the world. There's a lot of people that, that ask me how many haircuts I do, and uh -huh. they ask me how much I charge, and then they start uh -huh. doing the little math in their head, and they kind of get mad, like, well. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you know I want to talk about prices later, right? You know that's somebody that knows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, so anyways, uh, <laughs> I was already a barber, but yeah. I was still like trying to figure out what I wanted to go to college for. Okay. And I'm like, man, should I go for like computer uh, programming or something? Because I always like computers. Yeah, yeah, like for that. sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like trying to figure it out. Like, man, I'm going to take a year to figure out what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And then one day it just finally hit me. I was like, man, I'm a barber. Like, what am I doing? Right. Like, why am I fighting it? Like, I cut hair. Yeah, like, yeah. it's a great career. For sure. And then uh, one of the other barbers here in Waco, uh, I don't know if you know who he is, Oscar Diaz. Mm -hmm. uh, do I know Oscar Diaz? Uh, if I do, I shout out to you, Oscar. He works at King's. Oh, okay. okay. I love King. Oh, Shout out Christian. Yeah, yeah. Shout out yeah. Misa. He was on the show. Yeah, Oscar yeah. was on there. Okay. So uh, I don't know if I was cutting his hair or he was cutting my hair because we would just like cut each other's hair every now and then. For sure. He told me, he's like, hey, bro, I finally signed up for barber school. And I was like, for real? I'm like, how was it, bro? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, it was cool. Blah, 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 blah. You do this. And then he gave me the number. And at the time, we didn't have no barber school in Waco. Okay, got so you. So I had to drive to Colleen like every oh, yeah. single day. It was mm -hmm. an hour there and an hour back. Yeesh. And, uh, yeah, but with traffic on one night. Yeah, but I mean, thanks, <laughs> thanks to Oscar, like he's the one that kind of, like, like I knew about the school, but sure. I just needed to see somebody else do it. Okay. And so he was he was around my age, mm -hmm. and I seen him go, and I was like, man, I need to sign up too. So I signed up. Like, a little after he signed up, he started three months before me because there was, like, a wait list. Oh, got you. And, uh, yeah, man, and then I just, I went to barber school, and I was going to barber school every Tuesday through Saturday. From, oh, wow. From uh, 8 to eight to 4. Okay. So, it was, like, 8 hours. I'm sure it was a lot of, well, you were a teenager at the time. You were yeah, 18 we were or 19. Yeah, because there was other, okay. there was other, uh, other barbers from Waco. Right. Uh, uh, Eric over there at Waco Fades, and then uh, mm -hmm. Eduardo over there at uh, Gentleman's Barbershop. Okay. We were all going to school at the same time, so we carpooled. A lot, and uh, that helped out a lot with gas. And yeah, that yeah. That. But uh, at yeah. Gen Gentleman's Barbershop, does he own that one? Uh, no, I think Aaron owns Gentleman's Barbershop. Okay, is that, is that the one right off the highway? Yeah, by the Delta Inn. Can I just give them a shout out because nobody will know. I th and I got this wrong. Oh, Kenneth, please forgive me. That's where I did my photo shoot for uh, my most recent photo cover. For real? Yeah, it was. I pulled up to the barbershop, and I was like, "You got to be kidding me, right?" Yeah, Gentleman's. <laughs> yes, is, is in that, that shopping center across. Okay, the yes, where the car washes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Who took your photos? Uh, Kenneth Coleman. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, 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 he did my photos, yeah. and when we pulled up to the barbershop, I'm not going to lie, I was like, Kenneth, you're kidding me, right? But it yeah. worked out because you guys couldn't tell. So how about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And shout out to Aaron for letting us use it. It was yeah, like a no, Sunday. It's a, it's a nice it's Yeah, a nice it was Aaron a very nice shop, for sure. Aaron was actually at a... Um, he was at a... I'm not going to give you all... No, yeah, okay, that's fine. <laughs> but he was, okay. he was at a... The biography of everybody. Yeah, he was at a, a JC's in Bellmead. Oh, okay, got you. Song. So, yeah. I mean, good for him, man. Yeah, for sure. I'm always, I'm always like, happy when I see other barbers like finally open up their yeah. shop. It's like man, that's that's nice. I like to see. Uh, yeah, it. that I was a, see that. that was a little background for you guys. Who, yeah, yeah I, I was very skeptical about it at first. I was like, you got to be kidding me. But yeah. we made it work. And shout out to Kenneth. Yeah. You know what? I definitely we're gonna get more into your barber career, of course, and about who you are. I want to get into your YouTube channel, but we're gonna take a quick little break. All right, and when we get back, we're gonna learn more about Carlos Canales' career, becoming a barber, maybe some of the struggles that he dealt with, and more. So make sure you guys stay tuned here on the Public Affair. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this really, really great episode with my special guest, Carlos Canales. Before we continue, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. This episode is brought to us by JR Renovations with Juliana Resendez. She's a general contractor specializing in commercial businesses and residential homes. She's a true queen, leveling the playing field in a male-dominated industry. You can follow her on Facebook and Instagram at JR Renovations and call the number on the screen for your consultation. My girl, Juliana Resendez, you want to talk about somebody who gives back to the community? That is her, darling. Thank you so much for sponsoring this episode episode of The Public Affair. Of course, the Bandas Hauling Service with Julian and Ana Banda, they rent dump trailers. You fill it up, they haul it away. They also do junk removal and tree brush removal and haul cars in and out of town. Like I said, my car broke down. I said, Julian, can you come tow my car? He said, where is it at and what time? I loved it. Talk about punctual, talk about on time. Julian is the go. Book now with the number on the screen to Bandas Hauling Service. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Ooh, of course, to one of my new sponsors, Ali's Drive-In with Alexis and Diana Rivas. They're a convenience store located where the old Kobe's is in South Waco, 2105 Dutton Avenue. Stop by for delicious snacks or a cold drink. Um, if you need beer for a party or just yourself, they have a huge freezer stocked with a wide selection of ice cold beer. Order from the kitchen too with a delicious selection of food to satisfy your appetite to go with that cold beer. Stop by this monumental and convenient spot in South Waco today at 2105 Dutton Avenue. Ali's Drive-In. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to Embrace Fitness with Lisette Luna and Amanda Switzer. They teach group fitness classes that are fun 
and dynamic darling they also specialize in total body workout by Excola and by jackie and zumba step classes are monday through thursday at 6 p.m and 7 p.m you can also contact them to rent the building for parties and small events those girls don't stop um, and they're gonna get you looking snatched this summer all right so make sure you guys hit up embrace fitness thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair oh of course the taquisa palacios buenissimo lupe palacios they provide delicious and affordable tacos for any event their meat choices include carne asada pollo chorizo pastor y barbacoa oh and you can't forget the aguas frescas they have flavors including limonada or chata oh i'm thirsty piña melon jamaica y tamarindo they also provide all the plastic so you don't gotta go no napkins no plates no nothing because they got it for you book now with the number on the screen they're delicious and affordable taquisa palacios thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair and of course to eric carrillo with alan samuels dodge chrysler jeep one of the hottest salesmen out right now hit him up for your next new or pre-owned vehicle he even offers a 200 same day referral bonus if they buy from you when you send them you get 200 like if you send five people a month that's like a thousand dollars that's more than any of us have right now eric also helps people with just an itn and even has first time buyer program hit him up to find out all about it and um no credit no problem he's got you as well contact him now with the number on the screen and get your new ride today darling to eric carrillo thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of the public affair thank you guys again so much for tuning and we're gonna get right back into it my boy carlos canales who's on the public affair today let's go hey guys welcome back to this episode of the public affair before we left we were just getting to know more about carlos canales and his journey to become a barber okay so you know i wonder you said that it was kind of a you know you guys were carpooling between back and forth and colleen and everything how much of a sacrifice was it for you i mean was it hard because you were still young at the time or like what was that experience like for you? I'm, I'm glad i went when i went because mm -hmm. uh i didn't i didn't have a family Okay. Well, like I'm talking about like a wife and a kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I can see how it can be really tough now. But at mm -hmm. the times, like shout out to my parents, man. Like I didn't, I guess I kind of took it for granted back in you know back in the day. But I yeah. didn't realize like man, they were paying the bills. Okay. Like I was just at their house, just right for hair, sure. And I didn't have to worry about anything just by going to school and paying for it. Yeah, That's yeah. It. I mean, I paid for barber school cutting hair. Right. <laughs> well, and, and you know, like a lot of a lot of barbers wait so long to mm -hmm. go to school, right? Like I knew a barber who was cutting for a long time, and then he he waited I think yeah. almost ten years. He said, you know, um, I. I wonder why that would be for people. I mean, is it just like really expensive or? Uh, I mean, it could be that. And sometimes mm -hmm. it, it'll just throw you off track. Like if you're yeah. already too busy, you don't have time to go sit in a barber school for right. eight hours. But I always recommend, you know, people getting their license. Getting license. It's just, they're just, you just have the ceilings are much higher when you have your license. Okay. Like if you don't have a license, like that's cool. There's only so much you can make at home. Though. Okay, gotcha, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but even if you work at a shop, isn't getting caught like winning the lottery, like you might as well just kind of risk it. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, I mean kind of technically rare. like yeah. it's rare that people get caught you know yeah at the at you know cutting without a license that there, there has to be somebody has to snitch on you okay yeah that's so, what I'm saying yeah somebody yeah. has to report you to TD, <laughs> somebody has to report you to, somebody you have to really like make somebody mad. make somebody, somebody mad, has yeah. to report you to TDLR okay and then they're gonna come investigate yeah and then if you're not there literally cutting hair when they show up then okay I mean you're kind of in the clear but but there's no like warning, right? They're not saying, okay, no, we're no, coming no, no, Tuesday no, no, at no. two. Yeah, they'll just show up. Yeah, so it's like, why don't you take yeah. the week off? Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. but I mean, it's, it's just you don't, you never know. That's the risk, and it's it's a liability for the owner. Okay, got you. If you have a barber work with no license, then it's just an extra liability that. Okay, for is, sure. Is is having by having you there? So it's safe to say that a lot of people just really kind of aren't doing that anymore. It's like, okay, go get your license and then you can work. I mean, yeah, we're, you know, I, I know we won't a lot. Of, anybody. A lot of barbers <laughs> work at a barbershop while they're in school. Oh, yeah. And I mean, that that's understandable. That's a different, like, especially mm -hmm. like if you're already towards the end of barber school. Like for sure, two, for months, sure. Like, oh, man, you know, just kind of get get a couple reps in on the yeah, weekends, yeah. you know, help with walk-ins. And I mean, technically, we're not supposed to do that. But I was going to say, think of it like an internship. What, I mean, yeah, wouldn't you? Exactly, you know what like I mean? You really want some hands-on experience. Yeah, for sure. Before you start working in the shop. Yeah. But I mean, uh, I don't know if a TDLR is watching this video, but we don't We do not do that. <laughs> There's lots ever. of people that watch this video. Yeah. They don't do that. They may not. I'm just asking questions, yeah, TDLR. Questions, okay, yeah. yeah. I have tons of questions. I can ask questions. It's my show, TDLR. Come find me. <laughs> but yeah, we do do that. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, no, but, but I, I don't mean, see nothing wrong with no, that. It's there like a, it's like having a trainee, you know. Like whenever you go mm -hmm. to whenever you go to barber school, like yeah, the first yeah. the first three months is all book work. Like they the first like the first couple weeks is like the history of barbering. Oh, okay, and gotcha. And then they go into sanitation. Oh yeah. They go, so sanitation is one of the first things that they hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by the time you're like getting ready to graduate from barber school, right. like you've hit sanitation already. Like oh, okay. You know you know the rules. 
Yeah. I mean, you know how to properly, you know, clean your your, uh, your instruments. For and, sure. And all that stuff. But that's that thing that's like that blue water the that's barbicide. sitting there. Yeah, is that what it is? It's a barbicide jar. Uh, people don't really, I mean, I don't really use it too oh, much. Oh, you don't? Okay. I mean, every now and then, but they have they have so many disinfectant sprays. Right. But it's because it's just, it's just like to use that, you have to rinse your equipment down. Okay. Rooms and stuff. Dip it in there for about 15 minutes. Oof. Take it out and then rinse it out again. And if you got like you're in a busy day, you got haircuts. Okay, yeah. Like Wait, we got time for all this. All yeah, that. okay. Maybe you can swap it in and out. Yeah, uh, I use it sometimes, but it's just it just it has to be like I usually always just spray my stuff. Down yeah, for sure. Side. It has to be like drastic, like somebody had your holes or something. Like, oh, okay, man, gotcha. I for sure got to dip this for at least 20 minutes and just like right. disinfect everything really good. Yeah. Now, but in the school too though, right? Don't they kind of open up like a like an actual shop and it's probably like five bucks to get oh, your hair cut? Uh, Was it terrible? Can you talk barber, to us about that? Barber school is... <laughs> I'm not going to go as far and say it's a scam. It's not a scam. Okay, you need, okay. You need to go to barber school. Yeah, I go to barber school, yeah. Man, it's such a good hustle. Is it they're really? Charging you, uh-huh. They're charging you to go to barber school, first okay. of all. Okay, okay. And then on top of that, you're working for them because you're cutting hair for the, the barber shop. Oh, so you still have to pay like rent? Like well, rent? you don't have to pay booth rent, but okay. it's like you're paying to go to school, right? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So okay. your tuition. And while okay. you're there, you're actually cutting hair and okay. making the school more money oh, wow. for eight hours. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. So it's just like it's a win-win. Right? Okay, it's for just, them a, is yeah, what you're saying. The yeah, owners, yeah. So were you ever in a situation? Because I can remember when, okay, shout out to my friend Zay, who is a barber as well. And I used to go to the one over there on North 19th. What is that freaking barber school called? You know what I'm talking about? Interstate. Interstate. Okay, I used to go to Interstate to get my hair cut. That's where I met Sid, actually, as well, because yeah. he went to school there. And I remember walking in, and I remember always being packed with, like, kids, right? Because it was, like, $5 a haircut. Mm -hmm. or whatever and i remember somebody complaining about their haircut you have to remember they're all trainees right Mm -hmm. and i remember the teacher really getting on to the client like you have to remember this is a barber school they're practicing did you you ever experience something like that uh not in barber school okay Uh, in barber school by the time i went to barber school i was already like i was already kind of good at cutting hair Uh, okay (laughs) but there was some other barbers but i mean the, the instructors at barber school they 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 got your back most of the time because okay. it's like you said it's a barber school like what do you expect for you're sure five dollars it says barber students yeah yeah you cannot complain about you can't school. complain yeah you go in there you should know what you're signing up for you want it the cheap price you yeah the five dollars yeah you know? and I, and it works out for moms that got like five six kids well because and then the same can't be said for everybody like you who went to school because maybe that's their actual first time cutting hair yeah that's yeah. what you go to there's school people, for is to a, learn right mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that just and it's it's a misconception like they think they're gonna teach them how to cut hair in barber school. They okay. really don't teach you how to cut hair. Right, right. The other students there are gonna teach you. Okay. And the experience that you're gonna get from doing those five dollar haircuts that's gonna right. teach you more than the actual school. So that's where you're gonna learn. From. Well, it's being more hands on. I think yeah. it's the same yeah. to say about any. It's getting job. the practice. You yeah, know, I always for sure. try to tell people like, man, look, if you're gonna start to cut hair, you got like, I'd say at least about a hundred messed up haircuts in you. Oh wow. And you gotta get them out the way. The quicker okay. you get those hundred haircuts out the way, I guarantee you it's gonna be like night and day. It's just night and day. You okay. You gotta bust through them and it's a good a good time to do it is in barber school. You right. don't wanna do it in the shop. Once okay. you do it in the shop, you're gonna burn yourself a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah. You wanna mess people up at home mm. and in barber school. Well, because now they're saying that shop is like, ooh, they got that bad barber, you might get yeah. him, so don't and, go and, over there. Yeah. yeah, not even just the shop, but like people are gonna be like, Oh no, don't go to that dude in the okay. third chair, man. Oh, He's, that's so sad. I feel like that is so Yeah, once you burn horrible. yourself, you have to switch barber shops, but <laughs> Yeah, you don't wanna you you go on the run, the right? <laughs> get all that all that you're gonna mess some people up. Yeah, you yeah. Get that out the way at the house. What was what was your experience like? So I remember you mentioned the first time you messed up was with Kutis. Yeah. Okay, but outside of Kutis, like I guess did you mess up while you were in school or at when you got to a regular uh, shop or I've never I don't want to sound like but I've never messed somebody okay. up. If I, ha- I well, you know what? I take that back. I okay. have messed somebody up, but it's not when I mess up. It's not like oh, I messed up the haircut. It's, right. I gave somebody the wrong haircut sometimes. Oh, okay. Like somebody like I don't know. What do you get? Like a low fade? Uh, so what do I get? I can't. I, he, he already knows <laughs> okay. how I like it. Okay. okay. So say, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Like say I cut your hair. I, it's week. called the public affair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so say you get a low fade every yeah. single week, right? Low fade, low fade, low fade, low fade, okay. and I talk a lot. When I'm cutting hair. Yeah, yeah. You come in one day, you're like, hey, man, I want to switch it up today. I want to get a taper fade. Okay. I don't want a low fade. Taper fade is just right here. And For it's sure. Just the back. And if I get to talking, man, I get to spray my clippers down. I get to cut your hair and I give you a low fade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just gave you the wrong haircut. You know what okay. I mean? You asked for a taper fade this time, but I'm so used to giving you a low fade. Okay, okay. Just, so I've done that a couple times. But, but then there's some of those barbers, too, that just kind of give you what they want. Because, okay, oh, there is a barber shop that I go to when I go home to New York. And it's, I'm not going to name the barber shop. But, um, you can name I, I, I'm, No, yeah, because they, they might watch and sue me. But, <laughs> and I, I don't have money for a yeah. lawyer, Carlos. Okay? So uh-huh. stop this. I barely have money to pay for this iPad. <laughs> but, um, but I will say, I go to this barber shop. And the one time I went, I said, look, this is what it is. Like, you know, whatever. And they just like, all right. And just did their own cut
bro. Yeah, <laughs> He's like, you got to wait like three weeks. Okay? There, is some, there is some barbers out there that do that. I, yeah. I hear, like every time I get new clients, uh, most of the time mm-hmm. they uh, they have a complaint about their old client. I mean, okay. their old barber. Their old barber, yeah. And I hardly ever like, like you indulge. Know, I know it's like them. little things. Like yeah, sometimes, yeah. And, and me as a barber, I understand. Mm-hmm. Like, so I always give their other barber credit. Like, you know, he probably just this and this. It wasn't oh, yeah. anything. But a lot of the complaints is like, oh man, he just don't give me what I asked for. He yeah, like, yeah. He decides what's best for me, and I can see that. <laughs> like, I can look at some people that get certain yeah. haircuts. And in my head, I'm like, this is not for you. Right, right. You should do it like this, but I'm not going to do it. No, I got you. Because at the end of the day, you know, you got to give them what they have. You know, I will say I used to be bald-headed, right? So I used to get the one all the way around. And yeah. I don't know why you guys let me do that for so many years. Buzz Lightyear. I, I, whatever it was. <laughs> I look at those old pictures of myself, yeah. and I'm like, you guys are terrible. That's when I wasn't going to a yeah. barber. And then, you know, Sid kind of was like the one who was like, ooh, we should try this, we should try like, this. And he's constantly giving me like yeah. like little, oh, we should try this. Should. But I, I just like what I've got going on. I mean, I have an appointment on Wednesday, so I'm a yeah. little, you know, this is a Monday while we're recording. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, he's always like, you know, uh, like, oh, we should try this. And I'm just so not open to it, you know? Like, yeah. change is weird to me. Yeah. You know? Uh, you should, yeah, a lot of people should. <laughs> try different their, things. Yeah, when they give their barber Bro, credit, please. Like, Sid did, 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 did yeah. you right. Like, you he like, did do me right. He's had me that, looking that fresh for over cut. 100 episodes of the show. That buzz cut. Wasn't was doing it. <laughs> I've seen the pictures. I've seen did the you pictures. See the pictures? That's <laughs> wild. He's like one of those people, you know, I always notice people, there's people mm. that, they look younger now than okay. they did when they were younger. Oh, wasn't I looking terrible? I'm oh, sorry. That was a- <laughs> wasn't I looking terrible back it's in like the day? It's like you aged backwards. Well, it's because well, you did. lost a lot of weight too, though. It, the so show that- changed my life. That's mm-hmm. why I see myself on camera every week, yeah. and I'm constantly critiquing Even the way I from look. From like now. episode one to episode now, right? Like, yeah, you, know, you can tell the difference. And now I can cross my legs, so that you I, I make before? sure. No, I make sure I cross my legs on every episode. <laughs> now I'm trying to let everybody know what the business is. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so okay, so after okay, so you graduate barber school. Now you have your. If I get this wrong, forgive me. You have your own shop now. Is that correct? I have a suite. Okay, you have a suite. Yeah, okay. it's a suite. But before you were working for a somebody at, uh, shop. Off the top. I was at Off the Top. Off the top. Off okay. Shop. So what made you decide to, because I always looked at barbers as like you guys are kind of your own boss. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So why make the decision to go to your own suite instead of working at a barber shop? Uh, I think a lot of it was, uh, well, you've seen that last video. I think you, you, you I had did. tagged me in it. Yeah, because you know uh, I have that in my notes too. So we yeah. can <laughs> I love it. Like I'm constantly working on something. Okay. Like it's, it, whether it's my blends, like you might catch me one week, like I'm doing something different with the blends. Mm-hmm. Another week I'm doing something different with the edge ups. Yeah. Like I'm constantly working on different areas of my craft. Okay. And it got to the point to where it's like, okay, how can I elevate like right. the whole experience? Okay. Like, and there's nothing wrong with off the top. But I was like, all right, oh, yeah. how can I offer something a little bit nicer? Maybe offer some shampoos. Yeah. Like, what's next? Like, and okay. then at the same time, it's like, I had it too good at off the top, man. Okay. Them boys over there, man, is is it's they a treated great. You well. Wow, man. Yeah. It's a great, probably one of the best barbershops in Waco. All, uh-huh. the, all the barbers over there were just real good people, man. And Shout out to them. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, I just feel like I couldn't really grow there because I wasn't challenged. Okay. Like, it was just too easy. You like, were spoiled. Was, yeah. Like, it was, everybody <laughs> was cool. It was just. Yeah. Like I need to challenge myself. Okay. So now that I'm in a suite, it's like in, in a way I'm kind of finding my own uh style, I guess you yeah, could say. Yeah. So whenever eventually I do go on and open up a shop, like it's not gonna be uh like a regurgitation of like off the top. Okay, or look you. at me now where I was working before off the top. Oh yeah. Like I don't want it to be the same thing that I was just at. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I wanna find my own style and uh like see which way I wanna take sure. it. You know what I mean? Okay, I got you. But yeah, I like it, man. I so, still I mean I still go to off the top every now and then. Oh yeah, just yeah. kinda say hi and stuff or do well, you Well Roberto cut cuts my hair every now and then too. Oh okay, got you. Roberto or sometimes I just cut my own hair. Yeah. Or yeah. I'll, sometimes I let Rigo over there at Butler's mm-hmm. cut my hair and I just I'm kinda just yeah, Just hanging out. <laughs> that's that's cool. Okay, you know what? Um, I, I want to talk about the prices in barbers because mm-hmm. it seems like prices. I know, like I saw your face. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my uh, it was. I, I talked about this with my last guest. I think my last barber was Misa. Well, I had Chris, but Misa came on to promote his barber and um his barber ring. I don't know what the term is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so we and talked so. about prices constantly raising or whatever. And I think like barbers are really getting a lot of flack for raising their prices because mm-hmm. now haircuts are a good haircut's about thirty thirty five dollars yep. or more. Um, so have you had to experience any? backlash and what is your perspective on the prices uh, raising as far as getting haircuts i don't i've never i haven't experienced any backlash if okay. i have i just haven't noticed it like the yeah. drop off the churn i don't know if you know what churn is but like churn is the i know what churned ice cream is yeah well churn is, the, <laughs> churn is the amount of clientele that you're expecting to lose oh okay because of like a, a price increase or whatever you but I, that. I haven't experienced it maybe like looking back I might think of like one or two people like, oh, I haven't cut him in a while. Mm-hmm. But I don't even know if it's because of the price. Right. But uh, I think, man, we just have to keep up with the economy. And I, right, I feel sure. like 
like my method of of uh, increasing my prices is based strictly on business. It's like uh-huh. supply and demand. Oh yeah. So I got a method to where it's like once I'm ninety to ninety five percent booked consistently for yeah. like six weeks in a row. That means the demand is high. Okay. So it's time to increase the prices. Mm, got you. So that's how I, yeah, that's how I, I look at it exactly like that. It's yeah. a business. Like at the end of the day, uh, like I provide for my family. My wife doesn't work. Oh, ooh, uh, nice. Stay at home wife. My kids, Dang. like we just bought a house. Like, you know, I, I drive a nice truck. My, my wife has a nice car. Like, and I, it's on, it's on me. Do you have some cousins for me? <laughs> Do you have, hello? Yeah. Okay. So Where's it, the Cornelis is at? <laughs> <laughs> so it's on me to make sure that my business is growing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I have a lot of, oh. a lot of stuff that I have to maintain, like my family. So mm-hmm. if I don't look at it as a business, I'm mm-hmm. never going to be able to scale it. You yeah. Know yeah. I mean? So I think a lot of barbers are starting to catch on. And yeah. it's like, hey, man, like people are, you're staying busy because you're cheap. Like people are going to want to come every single week. For sure. Because it's only 15 bucks. Like yeah. why wouldn't I get a haircut every okay. every week if it's only like 15, 20 Is that a lot of pressure on you to be raising your family single-handedly like that? Uh, no, I don't feel any pressure. Oh, you don't? Okay. Like I just, I, to Carlos me. Carlos has got like this, this, I like your swag. You know yeah. what I mean? Confident yeah, but not just, cocky, you know? Yeah, like, to me it's just like, that's yeah. what you have to do, man. You're just like, doing I, what you got to do. But, I mean, I tell my wife all the time, like if she wants to work, if yeah. she wants to go, like that's totally fine with me. She can do whatever she wants. But I'm gonna make sure that. What's your good. wife's name again? Carla. 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 What's up? Where's got some cousins for me? What's up? <laughs> I ain't trying to work neither. I'm just trying to do this yeah. and get to the house and make lunch. Here. No, she's she's getting, she's getting she's getting tired yeah. of it though. Like it's, she really? it's not off. It's not. I mean, she's raising two kids. Is she making you lunch? Here? Uh, yeah, she does. So, she does so me, Carla, she does can you d- can you DM me, please? I want to know if making lunch gets old. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't think it's gonna get old. Yeah. I make my man's lunch all the time. Yeah, no, I mean, but, I mean, credit to her because I mean, yeah, it, for sure, it sounds good. Like oh, you know, stay at home. Yeah, but it's. Man, trust me, when she leaves and leaves mm. me with the kids for 30 minutes, like, I'm really? already calling her, like, hey, what time are you coming back? Okay. <laughs> like, you know, we have a four-year-old and a five-year-old, so I mean, yeah. that's a job in itself. For sure. She, she takes care of the kids. She cooks. She cleans. That's, that's to me, it's mm. just as hard as what I'm doing. Wow. You just don't see the money coming in because it's just, but it's, to me, we're pretty even. Yeah, like, pretty. She does as much work. Oh, yeah. And to, my, to me, she deserves everything she got. Like, Good she for you, Carla. Worry about none of that. Carla, tell your cousin slide in my DMs. What's up? <laughs> Ask away Andrew G on Instagram. I'm, I'm in. You know what I mean? But, you know, I, I, going back to the prices, though, and, and I told this to Misa too and I even told me and my barber talk about it. it's like what are we gonna do not get a haircut it's like with gas like exactly. I'm not gonna not get gas like I, I need yeah. gas I need a haircut I'm running a show every week I need to look mm-hmm. cute you know what I mean yep. so no I completely understand I, that I think a lot of barbers take it uh well they're scared that their clients are gonna take it personal and okay. it's not personal at all. it's not it's just, yeah it's, it has to be business like if you absolutely if you if you're doing this to support your family then you have to be more worried about running an efficient business mm-hmm. then you oh, oh um, you know pissing somebody off like, yeah oh, man, I don't want to make him mad like if I go up He's gonna get mad. Like, don't okay. worry about that. You don't gotta worry. feed yeah. your family. You gotta keep up. Uh, it's a it's a work at yeah, the end of the day. It's business. Exactly. And, and then on the same <clears throat> excuse me, I don't okay. I don't get mad at anybody that's okay. like, hey, you're too expensive now. Like, I'm not gonna come. Okay. Nobody's ever told me. Yeah. But if they do, I completely understand. Yeah. Like, that's you know, that's between them and their finances. For sure. That has nothing to do with me. Like, and that's cool. Like, that's what's up. Um, if yeah. you ever need a haircut, I'm still gonna be here. Yeah, yeah I got no you. Hard feelings. You know, I've talked to a lot of barbers on the show about um, competition. You were talking about competition earlier. And a lot of them have agreed to say, like, we don't really see things as competitive because there's not enough heads in town for us to cut. So do you feel the same way in terms of competition? Have you ever had another barber kind of just maybe try to, you know, steal your limelight, if you will? Uh, I mean, if I have, I, I just never noticed. All I know is Good that answer. He's media trained. <laughs> he makes his own videos at the house, so he knows. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just, like, yeah. I, I, man, I'm busy. Yeah. All week. Like, I'm, you could ask some of my clients. Like, it's hard to get in on, like, okay. the same week a lot of times. It recently yeah. has been a little bit slow, but I understand. I'm prepared Okay. For it. But I'm, I'm too, I'm busy all week. And all the barbers that I know are busy for all sure. week. Everybody that I know that cuts hair is busy all week. And I still go to the yeah. mall, still go somewhere, and I still see somebody with, like, a, like no haircut. Okay, got you. And it's like, there, there's still not enough barbers. Yeah, for sure. Like, if you do the math, like, the population compared to, like, the amount of barbers, mm-hmm. like, it's... We have a lot of clients. <laughs> I got you. That we can potentially each yeah, for sure, share. For sure. And it's like, there's just, there's never going to be too yeah. many barbers, in my opinion. No, for sure. So I never look at, like, I, I always see, like, young barbers from high school. Like, right. I'm always, like, in their DMs, like, bro, that cuts fire. Like, Oh, good for you for those encouragement like, words. School, yeah. Bro, like, because it, you know, yeah. for me, I look at it as, like, as a business, too. Because eventually uh-huh. I want to open up a shop. Yeah, yeah. And so we're going to need some more barbers. Oh, yeah, you absolutely. I mean? Yeah. So, like, I'm always looking at them, like, man, that's, like, I'm, I'm kind of, like, Looking at these, yeah, yeah, like, man, he's good, he's good. Like, I okay. want to be part of my team. Like, that's some good bars. Okay, yeah, you want to know what Carlos and kind of something different that I noticed about you than other barbers that I've met or have even had on the show is that you have your own YouTube channel at um, iFade92. Yeah. Okay, so
the inspiration behind starting a YouTube channel? Uh, I think it was like December of 2018 or 19. Okay. I don't remember exactly what year, but I was at home on a Christmas break. I gave myself like a Christmas break or whatever. Yeah, for sure. And uh, I was just on YouTube, and uh, there was this other barber named like Chris Basio. Okay. And he's real big like in the barber community, and he's real he's real big on like a uh, uh, finance. For sure. And making sure barbers like think you know business wise. Yeah, and yeah. Get their money right. And I was like, man, he's like. I liked his channel. And uh-huh. I was like, and I noticed that like I, I have uh like I talk a lot and I'm always uh-huh. trying to teach. I read a lot of books. Like I guess shout so, out to yeah. one of my cousins, I don't know his name is Eduardo, but he put me onto books uh-huh. like ten years ago. Right. And it's like it blows my mind that I didn't start early because I read a lot, a lot of books. Yeah. So I'm, everything I learn in books, I'm always trying to teach people while I'm cutting their hair. Okay. And like, bro, I read this book and I read this and this and this and I try oh, to nice. like when people somebody tells me something, I'm like, you know what? I read in the book once said this and mm-hmm. this and this and this, it'll help you out. So I was like, man, if I can, I could just record videos. Okay. And at have first, any of your gay clients told you to watch Brokeback Mountain yet? No. Because <laughs> no, it's really haven't. a good movie. So yeah. I'm just. <laughs> no, they haven't. Okay, got you. So uh, uh, <laughs> at first, I was, uh, I, my mind was kind of small. And I was like, okay. I, I'm, I was too worried about, because I was thinking, like, who's going to watch these videos? And I thought about all the other barbers in Waco. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I was like, I'm not teaching them nothing. Like, I'm not showing them mm-hmm. they don't know. But then oh, you'd when be I started. who watches. Yeah. yeah. And I started uploading videos and yeah. I get people from like, uh, Australia, like, yeah. Hey, man, thanks, Mike. This really helped me out. <laughs> Not the accent. <laughs> yeah, like, there's people like all yes. over the world, and okay. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna make these videos. Somebody out there is gonna watch this video one day, mm-hmm. and it's really just gonna help them out. Something's gonna click, and they'll be like, man, I'm gonna just follow this guy. And yeah, yeah. Watch all these videos. So now when I record a video, I look at it that way. Like, I'm not making it for people here. Yeah, working. yeah. I mean, they can watch. They're going to benefit from it. But there's somebody out there that's going to watch this video and be like, man, I really learned something. Yeah. You'd be surprised who watches. I just yeah. had a Disney star on this show. Yeah. A lot of recording yeah. artists. Okay. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's what's crazy. Um, the, one of the most recent videos that you just uploaded, I wrote it down so I don't forget it. It's called, If You're a Barber, Do This If You're Feeling Stuck. Okay, that's like the title of the video. You guys got to go check that out because mm-hmm. you talk a little bit about the barbershop or whatever and the barber experience, but it seems like you also got really into like the business side. And I feel like a lot of people starting their own business or whatever can really relate to that. And um, one of the things that really stuck out to me, what you were talking about, was that um, there was a part about being disciplined because a lot of people would put more discipline into a full-time job than something that they're passionate about. So what would inspire that? Like you sounded really, really... Um, Oh God, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you were really into that subject. Yeah. I could tell in your voice that you were very passionate about yeah. it. So what was uh, the inspiration I, behind that topic? I think it's cause like for me growing up, like I've never I've never felt like I was the best barber in the Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I look at other bars like, man, that dude's probably way better than me at fame. For sure, There's for always sure. somebody better than you. Uh-huh. So for me, I think what's helped me out a lot is my discipline and my availability. Mm-hmm. And I think if a lot of these barbers would would realize that they would grow so much. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, uh, like, I was telling uh, this other barber, for example, I was like, bro, you know why you can't stay busy is because, mm. like, I look at it from the client's pr- perspective. Like, I yeah, always yeah. put myself in the client's shoes and be like, okay, how how can I make this better for them? For sure. And I was like, bro, if you were my barber, I'd be scared every week. Mm. Like, I'm like, man, is he going to be there? Yeah, like, yeah. Is something going to pop up? Okay. Like, am I going to be able to get my well, hair Because they're constantly week? canceling. Yeah, I yeah. got a bunch of stuff going on outside of work. Right, right. And so I was like, man, one of the main things that people need to realize is if you're just disciplined and you're there consistently, For sure. and people know, they can trust you. They Absolutely, can trust that you're yeah. going to be there every week to give them the same haircut. Right. Then, you know, people are going to start, you know, going to you. Whether well, I, their haircut's perfect or not. Absolutely. Gonna... And granted, some things come up for everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. But if it's like, a, if it's a consistent basis where you're constantly yep. canceling, you're constantly canceling, it's almost as if you, 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 do yourself harm yeah. and you wouldn't constantly cancel on mm-hmm. somebody else's business yep. when you're working for them. Yeah. You know, so that's what I really took from it. You're that really struck. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I have a friend who's trying to start their own business, but they seem like they are more invested in their full-time job than they are yeah. this. And everybody knows this. And I have a full-time job too. I love it. Like I'm on my yeah. lunch break right now and they can let me come over here to do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but they know the public affair comes first. I don't do overtime. I'm yeah. not working days. I'm off. You know what I mean? Yeah. I give you all the 40 hours a week and then I'm coming, you know, there's a, there's a bar right off the top and a uh, shout out mm-hmm. to Adam. His name is Adam. Adam, okay. Adam Kurtz, he had a full time job. Wow. And then he got and then his, he, cuts. he got his license mm-hmm. and he actually quit his full time job. Oh, okay. But Adam was there every single day. Right, right. Early, grinding, grinding That's it. constantly, 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 constantly. Yeah. He was there before us a lot of times. Yeah. And he just stuck it out. And right now, like I I don't ever count other barbers money or like that, <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure. He stays busy. He, yeah, okay. He's really good. Like he's, we're, we're he's saying, been good since he started. He ain't taking new clients, is what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, nah, I, don't, I mean, I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, he's oh, I said like, new, not yours. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he's yeah. just and 
he already had the talent. Like it was yeah, there. for sure. But the the dedication, the consistency, the hard work, the being there early every single day. Yeah, that's what helped him grow a lot too. Oh, okay, got he's you. Reliable. Like, yeah, I yeah. Know one thing about Adam, he's gonna be there. If he tells you be there at seven in the morning, he's right. gonna be there. Yeah. And he, I think he got that from from being used to going to work so early. For sure. Too. Yeah. But it translated over, but. That's how quick. He, Something about he being grew. a morning person. Yeah, yeah. Well, he grew just you know being disciplined and For being sure. in the shop consistently, along with of course the talent that he already had. Absolutely. You know, and now he's. I mean, I don't. He looks like he's doing great. Good for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what's up. You know what else that I really like that you touched on your YouTube channel um, that my barber does too is promoting online booking. Yeah. Don't you feel like that that's a game changer? Oh, because I love not calling I, Sid every week and talking about where are you free, when are you free. I don't want to. I don't want to say I was the first person in Waco to do online. Booking, no, no. Oh. But I can't think of anybody else that was doing that online was doing it. in okay. 2013. Like, okay, got gotcha. you. I started in 2013. Right. And man, that's just. It's so, been, so do you have like your own kind of thing, or do you use? Because what I used to book at Elite yeah. Barbershop is the Cut app. I use Booksy. You have Booksy. Okay. Before yeah. that, I was using Gym Book, but they got out. They got bought out. By For sure. But yeah, I tell people all the time. Like, man, people try to text me, and sometimes I don't even reply on purpose. Well, because you're busy, yeah. and that's why it's so great. We need to promote online booking, like yeah. right now. No, seriously, whether it be Booksy or the Cut, yeah. I love going on there and just be like, all right, let me see when he's free. You well, know what it works I mean? For you too. Yes, yeah. you know, it and eliminates that whole back and forth. And I'm not waiting um, all day for you to text me back because. Yeah. You're back to back to back. What were you doing before online booking? Were you just writing it on a notebook? Or? Uh, yeah, I had like a whiteboard. Wow, write names down. Okay, but that got old, man. I was never a fan. Okay. Of that. And I tell people now, like, man, if I don't pay, I pay like forty bucks a month. Okay, for online booking. Oh, that's paying for itself, like with your haircuts. So it's, yeah, it's like I get mad because I was like, bro, like I'm paying so much just to be able to just wake up and look at my list. And okay, for people to be like, no, nah, I'm gonna just text you. No, no. It's like, bro. Okay, if you're his um, client, y'all need to start using the online booking. Please, let and, them know. And trust okay. me, I, I don't reply on purpose sometimes, you guys. Sorry <laughs> to put it out there. But sometimes, it's yeah. like if, if you know how to book online, yeah. and you're still trying to text me to get in. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm sorry. Stop, it, it, you know how to get in. It's just as easy to book online than text you. Like, it's just such a... Freaking yeah. cutting out the fat. It's so great. Mm-hmm. I love online booking. It's so yeah. convenient. So The only people that I, I give a pass to is like older clients. Like uh, okay, well, that's a little different. Yeah. That's like, I don't mind at all. Like, For I sure. I come in whenever. Absolutely. Through a text. No, I agree. Yeah, no, I really love, and I really encourage you guys to go watch his YouTube channel at ifade92, ifade92. all lowercase, because I really feel like, yes, up and coming barbers should, could take something from it, but um, also people that are running their own business or and some of it kind of seems like they have this way of word that's like philosophical. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And you have a really great vocabulary. And yeah. so a lot of it is really encouraging as well. Would you say that that was like the goal for doing that or? Uh, at first it wasn't. Okay. At first it was just like tutorials. And then, but then I, I just wanted to add more value to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Like, okay, so there's a bunch of other. It, it's crazy. But then I, then I realized yeah. like, you know what? It's my channel. For sure. Like just do whatever. Just do what you want to do. If you want to help you. And like I said earlier, like somebody out there is going to watch one of these oh, yeah, absolutely. videos that has no haircut tutorial on it and they're going to take something from it. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that, if two, three people take something from it, then my work is done. Like, oh, like, yeah. I don't care how many views I got on it. Everybody has said that the public affair has been such a good platform to promote local businesses, which yeah. was not my well, thing. I like beginning. your format. Like, it's, yeah. it's great. Like you know, It's just free-spirited. Well, you have <laughs> a lot of people on here. That's it. That's, that's the best way to grow your channel. Like, you did it organically. Right. And just little by little, you just started having different, different people on oh, here. Thank you. And that's better than, you know, somebody just, like, Say, for example, like if I had a podcast, I was like, uh-huh. yeah, it's just me every day. Though. Right. Like every episode Ooh. is just me talking about something different. Fun fact, I tried to do that about four years ago and scrapped it. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was boring. Yeah. It was well, just and, me. And, 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 you just limit it to it's limited right. to just the people that you know. Well, and that's what I'm saying. I wanted to get people who I like you and I didn't meet before yeah. today, except like you know messenger. Ago. Yeah, before <laughs> well, literally an hour ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you know before before I mean outside of messenger and stuff, and a lot of the people that I had on my show was the first time meeting them, and I really the which is great if it's giving your business promotion and stuff, awesome. But I was really just trying to do this show to be fun and slutty. That's all I was really trying to do. <laughs> it just happened to end up promoting it grew businesses into too. Something you, more. That's it. You know, but that's cool though. I think you mentioned it before. Before, like that's uh, it you don't really promote the same type of businesses right like like for example you promote like elite barbershop you right. wouldn't bring on another barbershop but that that's pretty right. cool. oh yeah they get exclusivity that. but yeah. then you know it doesn't say like because you don't work for elite barbershop but you get to come on and be on the show yeah. and what's great is that elite barbershop is like you know sid is like oh that would be a good one you know what yeah. i mean so it makes my job a hundred times a good guy, man. i've never met sid, sid but we, we can you uh, please go meet sid i want you to go meet we him. messaged one time uh, yeah and it was about a it was about going up on kids prices oh really <laughs> and he was like, bro, he's like that's i'm gonna do that too yeah yeah did or didn't, okay, I want you to meet him because he's actually like really yeah. nice. I no, love see, Sid. He seems 
really cool. And he like he was you know he's been I think the longest running sponsor that I've had okay. on the show. Yeah. If I'm not well, mistaken. He's your barber, so. Yeah. Well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. God. You know what? Oh, Carlos, we're running out of time. Um. But you know. Um. Just a quick question. You know, with all the tutorials that you create on YouTube and everything, why not become an instructor? Like, do you think that that's a, a better avenue to take? Uh, I feel like YouTube kind of does that. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't like go to a barber school and be an instructor. No, like, yeah, I'm sure yeah. I can teach a lot, but uh, I I do realize my wife was telling me, uh, actually one of my other clients was telling me too, uh -huh. like you have a very teaching nature. You do. And I told my wife the other day, I'm like, don't ask me nothing because <laughs> she gets mad. I'm like, why? If you know how I am, yeah, don't ask me nothing because you know I'm gonna go on for about five, six minutes wow. straight explaining everything. Okay. And she kind of was like. Oh, you need to I, come, yeah. You need like to come I just wanted you to tell me how this works. Okay, and like I like, literally well, asked you, me, do I'm you want beef or chicken for dinner? And it's like, <laughs> yeah, and I just you go know? off. And you like, go well, off. Did you know yeah. this, 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 this. I read in the book. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Are you one of those? Are you argumentative? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. I always, I know, I know when to argue with people. Okay, got you. Like I know there's some people that you're not gonna change their mind. Oh yeah. Like no. when it comes to politics and stuff, like at the shop, I just let people talk. Oh yeah. That's cool. That's cool. A lot of times I'll be like, yeah, you're right, bro. Yeah. I and mean, I'm sure you hear lots of great <laughs> stories as a barber too. You know, oh, I tried man, to get this out of me it, of it, and especially out of the gays too. I just know you're getting some good GCD. Like uh, that's it. Well, <laughs> it's just I don't know. Like yeah, okay, I get, some, I get some insight. I get like insight yeah, yeah. into like the gay community. And stuff. Yeah, for sure. Like I just take it. Like I take any other. I'm just saying, us gays, we got that tea. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Sid has heard me spill tons. Of, now I've, Sid has never heard me say who I've slept with. Okay? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, well, but, you some, know, some of my clients they don't ever like. They don't yeah, we don't. People out like we that. don't name job. Yeah, but they do tell me like, man, you'd be surprised. Carlos. Oh, you'd you know, be surprised, like, Carlos. That's all I've got to say, darling. <laughs> I don't get that, man. Like that. It's like, fun. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, to me, it's like I guess not everybody's ready to come out. But like, no, if yeah. You, if you are, like, just. You know what I mean? Well, you know, my theory, too, just I'm not going to harp on this either because we're running out of time. But my theory is that the people that I've slept with are not necessarily gay. They just have urges. Yeah. And nobody, like, listens to me <laughs> when I say that. But it's happened so much. How can you not be that way? I've been, man. I've, when I used to cut, I used to cut at my uncle's tire shop. Yeah, like, yeah. Chuckles, Oh, okay. I used to cut outside his shop. Yeah, and yeah. I used to cut at uh, uh, Cowboys on Ninth and Waco. Yeah, yeah. It's Rick's now. Okay. And uh, I used to always, man, there's old men, old Mexican dudes that yeah. get drunk. Man, they get drunk and they get gay. They get really gay, and don't they? Like, that's why when I went to Damian Carmona, why y'all want to call me a witch? Y'all was being extra gay when I was out there. All right? yeah, like some of these old that's, Mexican dudes. That, okay. Like, and like I'm trying to husband. Gabriel fans and everything. That's it. I'm just trying to husband them up. Like, I'm trying to make them lunch it, but they want to be all down low, whatever. Yeah. You know? So while I'm doing witchcraft and shit, um, I just want you to know that half <laughs> half of that town was definitely trying yeah. to get in this diamond mine, and only one achieved. So anyway, <laughs> um, God, Carlos, it was so great having you on the show. I'm really just happy that you finally found the courage and the confidence. Number one, to trust me to come on the show. Yeah. Like I said, I'm always nervous. Like I, I half the time, I think you guys don't want to come on the show because you think I'm trying to sleep with you. It's just so not happening. Yeah. But, um, especially because your wife is gorgeous. Yeah. But um, what what do, what do you like? Do you ever have time for personal stuff with the family and everything? Like, do you have to make that time? Like, or uh, what can we expect usually, next from you and such? I usually like I'm off Sundays and Mondays. And okay, got you. Usually, like whatever my wife wants to do for sure. I let her like because she she's, chooses. She's, yeah, she complains to me like that the week. Like, yeah, I come home too late. Oh, I wait too much. Maybe I'm trying to make some money. So <laughs> I always like tell her like you know what Sunday uh -huh. Monday whatever you want to do like that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. We just it's, so it's on her. I got you, so, got and you. I, and I try to dedicate most of my day to them. If we don't have a lot going on, right. I try to record a video and stuff. That's and, what's up. But, yeah, it's usually... Your videos have great quality, by the way. Yeah. You the, do a yeah. great job on those Maybe videos. too high quality. No, they're yeah, great. One time, you see all the gray hair. Keep it that way. Just keep it that way. Yeah. All right? <laughs> You're doing amazing. Um, and, and so, I guess, what's next? Do you plan on having your own barbershop anytime yeah, soon? Is that the in the goal. works? That's or? the goal. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not really in a hurry. Because, like mm. I said earlier, I'm just trying to... I'm just kind of looking around, for sure. seeing what, which way I want to go, which style, which, you know what I mean? Okay, I got you. And I'm in, I'm in no hurry, man. Yeah, like, I'm that's barely what's up. 29. I mean, I turned 30 this year. Okay, got you. Like, when, when, when's the birthday? When's the birthday? Oh, October. October, October okay. I'm yeah. literally like, the when this episode comes out, I'm literally turning 31 that day. Okay. So happy birthday to me, everybody. Watch. Happy birthday. Okay. Happy future birthday. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> but yeah, so I, yeah, I'm not in no hurry, man. Like, that's it's, what's it's, up. But I, I, I do know one thing whenever I mm -hmm. do it, it's going to be done right. Like, that's right. Everything is going to be. Everything in God's time. How about that? Me and God are pretty tight. Announce <laughs> to what people might think. Darling. No, I believe that. <laughs> okay. nobody knows, man. That's people it. Want to judge you, but they don't know your relationship. They with don't. Well, tell that town. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. well, Carlos, gosh, it was so great having you on the show. Thank, thank you, you again thank you. so much. Uh, are here. you taking clients right now? Do we need to? I mean, like, uh, yeah. Do you want to say mean, where you are? Or? Uh, I'm inside Salons by JC. Oh, okay, got it's you. Suite number fourteen for sure. Barber sure. Studio. You can see where. You oh, there you go. Oh, blends. Okay. Yeah, I
and there's a book book now button on there. There you go. And it's just everything you need is right there. Don't be calling him. He's not even giving out his number. I on even the show. have it. You'd be surprised. I have it in my in my bio. No haircut DMs. And guess what I get all the time? Uh, haircut Bro, DMs. You couldn't hear? People don't listen. Yeah. So. I tell everybody stay out of my DMs with the foolishness, and they come with the foolishness all the time. Yeah. Why did you curse so much? On, get that on my face. <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you think? What do you think they're gonna get you to like? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not gonna. No, curse I'm not apologizing. Like, this is you, the public what, affair. What do you think is gonna come? This out is 105 episodes. You should expect. Do they really nothing. think they're gonna change you? I'm not. They exactly. can't. They haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Two years in. What's up? <laughs> anyway, Carlos, thank you for coming on. Yes, I really. Sir. It was such a pleasure having you on the show. Yes. Honor's mine. For everybody who came onto the show, thank you guys again. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Um, follow um, Carlos's YouTube channel at iFade92. You guys got to go check it out. Um, if you're a local business owner, if you're an up-and-coming barber, you guys would really, really take some really good insight from that YouTube channel. Um, before we go, I definitely want to use this opportunity to give a shout-out to just a few more of our sponsors of this episode of The Public Affair. Of course, to my boy, Sid Rodriguez at Elite Barbershop, located on Hewitt Drive. You can call the number on the screen to book or download the Cut app. The Cut is a booking app, okay? <laughs> download the Cut app to book them. Walk-ins are welcome as well. They got Marcus Guerrero, Chris Reyes, Santos Cordova, David Rodriguez, Isaac Chavez, Isai, and Clint over there making you look super snackish as they've made me look for over 100 episodes of The Public Affair. Truly appreciate Elite Barbershop. Make sure you guys go check them out today. And I really want you to meet Sid. Set up a lunch, please. I want you guys, you guys would get I'll along. I'll be in touch with him. Yeah, I'll be best friends. I promise. He's so great. <laughs> Shout out to Elite Barbershop. Thank you guys so much. Of course, to Soko Soccer Academy with Dominic Gutierrez and Ariana Gutierrez, located at 3304 Franklin Drive. They offer team, small group, and individual skills training. They also provide elite skills training to make your kid a superb star athlete. Open play is on Monday and Wednesdays for ages 16 and older at 8:30 with Morrow, aka Silly Buns, only five dollars to play. Follow on Facebook at Soko Soccer Academy and on Instagram at Soko Soccer254. Thank you guys so much for being longtime sponsors of the pub. Public affair, of course, the J Pedal and Poke with Junior Fuentes, Thomas Roberts, and the entire family. They provide delicious Japanese savory crepes and poke bowls. They also have handcrafted Thai rolled ice cream for dessert. You choose from the menu item or create your own because we like to be in control, right? <laughs> Located on University Parks Drive and Hewitt Drive, you can order online at jpedaltx.com. And I think I'm gonna get some lunch from them after this because I'm starving, darling. Thank you guys so much for sponsoring this episode of the Public Affair. Of course, the Boyo Box and Audio, my boy Jeffrey Monreal, home for all your LED needs and auto accessories, installation stereos, door speakers, and audio systems. He also specializes in building custom subwoofer enclosures and much more. He's absolutely a jack of all trades, darling. Your one-stop shop to get everything done in one roof. My boy Jeffrey Monreal has been a longtime sponsor of the Public Affair, and I truly appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Oh, you know we can't go on without thanking. Junior Banda with Fatboy Michelada and Botana. Have you tried it? I haven't tried it. I'm getting you some. I'm getting you some. <laughs> I'm getting you some Fatboy Michelada and Botana. They provide the best Michelada and Botana plates for yourself or for a party. They have a menu of tons of different items, including Botana bowls, chamoy, pickles, and more. They're locally operated, so make sure you get the best and not the rest, darling. Follow on Facebook and Instagram at Fatboy Michelada y Botana and place your orders now. To Junior Banda, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of The Public Affair. To everybody who's tuned in, thank you guys again for all your continued support. To Carlos Canales, thank you so much for coming on to the show. Had a great time having a conversation with you. I hope we get to meet more. I'm going to come meet the family. We're going to have, we're gonna have dinner, okay? <laughs> okay for sure. Okay. And then tell your wife to hook me up with one of her cousins. And don't forget, <laughs> darling, to always keep it between us. <laughs> That's it. Thank <laughs> you. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>